welcome to a very special roundtable presentation brought to you by Homecoming 2020 and the Alumni Association. I'm Ann Grace Siebert, Director of Alumni Engagement, and it is my pleasure to have the opportunity to sit with this group of outstanding alumni and student leaders. This group reminds me that despite the challenges we are facing with COVID, collegiate spirit is undefeated. I would now like to turn it over to Associate Athletic Director Andrew Stanley. Just give a quick uh, general time frame of graduation and, and what they played. I graduated in 1988, so a long time ago, but uh, I played um, football and I wrestled and played lacrosse, although Stanley would, uh, would say that didn't really happen. But I also coached golf at some point, the JD golf team, which was the best job I've ever had. And he coached football, and he coached lacrosse, and he coached wrestling. I'll segue to me, actually, because uh, uh, Mr. Farrell coached me in seventh grade, seventh, eighth grade, something like that. Yeah. Um, and um, and so we go back a little bit. But I, I, my name's Harry Wilson, class 2001. I played football, basketball, and baseball. I ran a little bit of track as well. Um, yeah, that's it. And played baseball and football at Richmond. That's true. Yep. And is, is the owner of the single greatest play I've ever seen in a collegiate uniform at Godwin as as a fan i would go so far as to say the single greatest football performance i ever saw <laughs> picked off a ball ran a punt back maybe i'm gonna make stuff up caught a couple passes probably on the chair route <laughs> that's right that's put right. it to him yeah a lot of good memories graham uh, graham mandel i graduated in 2008 i played a bunch of sports at collegiate but primarily uh soccer all four years and then played soccer at uh, Franklin and Marshall College after graduation. Awesome. And Miss Jewett just joined us. Good morning, everybody. My name is Erin Smith Jewett, and I graduated in 94 and loved my collegiate athletic days. I played a lot of field hockey, a lot of soccer, and um, ran track for Jim Hickey and Weldon, and then continued my career at Davidson playing field hockey, and that was great. So um, I'm glad to see you all. Thanks for letting me get on late. Awesome. There's a great, there's great continuity there. Uh, Harry said I was his seventh grade football coach. Aaron's dad was my seventh grade football coach. <laughs> all in the family. I want to uh, thank you all for coming. I'm going to talk to the alums and just try and put them on the spot right out of the shoots here. Early in the, uh, early in the year, we met with all the captains who were on here about the opportunities uh, that this fall would present them. Obviously, it's a little different year, but we talked about neat things that they could maybe accomplish with games in question. And so far the kids have done an absolutely, the, the fall's wrapping up, they've done an amazing job. The, the team bonding, the chemistry they've developed, the hard work, the way they've shown up. And I think as the, I'm a middle school football coach and the football captains have come to see us at practice a bunch and they've talked about how valuable the time on the field has been, to, been for them uh, as a team. And I, I'd like to ask the alums to talk about unique experience a unique experience they had that has stuck with them i think this season is going to stick with these athletes for a long time because they just had so much time together and i'd love to get you guys to reflect on an experience you had that maybe had nothing to do with a win or a loss but that you something you learned in sports that stuck with you uh from your days here to to now coach farrell wow uh <laughs> thanks dan you know it, it's uh I think that that maybe my favorite memory of, of sports at collegiate was uh, was in the middle school and it was even before we had interscholastic sports and it used to be I'm sure that this would be um, you know, educational ed evolution has made it so that you can't do this anymore with your schedule there's so many different things you do during the day but we used to have PE for two periods a day and we in fifth grade we'd go from 1030 to noon and in sixth grade, it was probably those poor coaches from noon to 1.30. And every, every single day, we would go and have some sport, whether it was football or soccer, or basketball. We even did track and pole vaulting in the spring. We played lacrosse with football helmets. This was back in like 1982 or one. Um, but there was always a season, and there was always some sort of competitive opportunity for us every day, which was great for middle school boys, I'm sure, to calm them down for the teachers. But, you know, it sort of, I think, honed uh, interest in athletics for a lot of people and a lot of uh, sort of competitive juices were, were 
fomented, is that a word, uh, during that time. And uh, I think that just sort of friendships, we still um, among my peers talk and giggle about those, uh, the funny things that happened and the people that were out there and everybody's gotten much, much better as time has passed with the glory they achieved out there. But this was, this was a cool thing every day to have athletics be that much of an important part of, of our education. Yeah, I like that wordy. I mean, I, I think that um, for me, um, you know, there's there's so many memories like on, on the field, if you will. But I, I think that the things that stick with me are like the, the moments or the feeling after a game. Right. And you're on the field. I'm, let's say football, for example. And I'm on the field and, you know, like and I'm, I'm getting a chance to see my parents after the game, after a, like a big successful game. And, and the feeling of like, kind of like how, how, how like grateful I was that like both of my, both of my parents, I was lucky enough to have both my, my parents at every game. It felt like, right. I'm not sure they missed one or two, but it seemed like they were at every game. And, and, you know, uh, Stanley and, and Farrell mentioned the, um, mentioned this Goblin game, right. My junior year. So this must've been, gosh, I guess this was 1999, uh, fall of 1999 and, um, had a really great game, but it was interesting because, uh, my dad passed away guys at like in 2010. And, um, and at his funeral, I told this story. Um, it was kind of cloudy. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blacked out, I think, during his funeral. But I, but I remember I remember telling the story about that game. And I remember seeing my dad running down the field with me, essentially, because he was <laughs> he was like on the outs. Uh, Goblin has the track around the field. And somehow he got on, you know, per usual, got on the field, like got on the track, like within the gate. And I remember, like, I, it was late in the game. Goblin was driving. And their tight end caught a ball and I went to tackle him. Somebody else had him. So I ripped the ball from him and took it like 88 yards back the other way for a touchdown. And once the quarterback d dove at my feet and missed me, I knew it was a touchdown. I looked to my right and there was my dad step for step, like running with me. And so, you know, the moment, like that was a moment um, that, that obviously I'll never forget because here I am, you know, 20 plus years later talking about it. But um but I, of course, I also wouldn't know that he'd pass away, you know, 10 years late, 10 or 11 years later. Right. And so like those moments were really, were really special, you know, and, and, um, and I think that, you know, we're, we're lucky enough as collegiate alum or collegiate, you know, when you're at collegiate currently, many of most, many of us have that support system around us. We're lucky enough to have that support system around, whether it be a, a, a grandparent, an uncle, an aunt, uh, some other type of guardian, but a lot of, most of us have some sort some sort of support system around us that that help us like this memories aren't anything without people around us, you know what I mean? To experience it with. And, and so, you know, whether it be my peers or, or former coaches or whatever it might be, it's like the people, you know, the people, not the result or the outcomes from the games, but the people and, and the experiences. I think that's what homecoming's about, you know, um, homecomings is really about, you know, celebrating with the people and the memories and everything like that. So that's, that's, that's what I think about. And, and Harry, how old was your dad? About 45 at that point? He must have been, yeah, about 40. Yeah. And you weren't exactly slow. That's pretty good wheels. <laughs> yeah, he was moving. He was moving, man. He was moving. So, uh, so yeah, that was, yeah, that was a good memory. Um, and I'll just piggyback off of what Harry just said, that collegiate has a special place in my heart from sports, especially coming into collegiate, going into high school. I was the new kid from New York, didn't know how I would adapt to it. I was there two weeks early for soccer. A week later, I had some of my best friends that I'm still close with to this day, still keep close with Coach Blair, Coach Ukra, Coach Lewis. And to that point, the game, soccer, that's what attracted me to the sport. But my fondest memories at Collegiate are actually the bus rides after a big win, coming back from Virginia Beach, coming back from D.C., sitting on that bus, and I can't share all the stories, maybe not all appropriate for this forum, but just being on that bus with your teammates, big win, big loss, but just that camaraderie is what really left a lasting impression for me um, playing sports, both soccer, basketball, indoor soccer, you name it. There was a sense of camaraderie and also the relationship you build with your peers, as well as the coaches, which to this day, I do not go to a collegiate reunion without seeing Shep the night before. When Coach Blair is in town, I make sure to get together with him. So it's those relationships I feel we've been able to foster as a result of sports within the confines of collegiate that I value the most to this day. 
I'm going to jump right in with everybody else. And I think really quickly, the mom and me is going to say that you guys, um, those of you captains on this group chat, this Zoom, I mean, unbelievable resolve and resiliency that you all are showing your teams and your um, classmates. I mean, I'm, I'm so sorry that we're on this call for this reason that you don't get the traditional homecoming, but I'm so impressed with how you all have led. And I've certainly seen um, my daughter plays Cub field hockey. And I think Sarah Bart's in the captains have come to the Cub practices and that's just resonated with those kids because your, your mood and your leadership flows right on down. So I just wanna say that really quickly and then I'm just gonna piggyback kind of on the relationship comment. Um, I don't remember a lot of scores. I don't remember the wins and losses. I remember a game against Norfolk Academy senior year. We were ranked, we were really good. We had a, a great group of girls that just loved to play field hockey. And I missed an open goal on Norfolk Academy. I was an attack wing, missed it. And I mean, should have made the goal, didn't make the goal. Karen Doxy, who's still one of the most important and kind of pivotal people in my life, just quietly said, hey, no worries, but I bet you'll never miss that shot again. Um, just good coaching. Just, hey, don't beat yourself up. There are 10 other people on this team to, to make that goal the next time. Don't worry. But she said, what she said was so clear, you'll never miss that shot again. Well, then in my senior year in Davidson, we were tied triple overtime with BCU. Guess who had the open goal? Guess who finally made it? And guess who was there to celebrate with me? Karen Doxy. So it's not about me. It's just, that was just amazing coaching. And that was kind, compassionate coaching. And when I, when I didn't miss the goal, it felt really good not to miss the goal. So um, anyway, that's my story. It's just really about the collegiate connections and mentors and coaches that I think are so special. And for you senior captains, I'm so glad that you all have that, um, those connections in spite of COVID and not being able to have the traditional games and competitions. Hey, uh, Graham, you said something really interesting uh, that made me think about uh, and, and Henry Mountcastle, I, I hope you maybe could, could comment on this because uh, you know, Graham mentioned playing for Charlie Blair and for Rob Ucrop and for Shep Lewis. And I'm sure that for a lot of parents and, and, uh, and I guess alumni of Collegiate who had you know, sort of that longitudinal experience of Charlie Blair being there pretty much throughout for a lot of them, whether it was his coach or middle school head. You know, now Rob and Shep are the, the coaches of the varsity soccer team in what, what sorts of things, because Henry, you probably played for Charlie for at least a year and certainly had him in middle school. What do you see, and it, it kind of goes with what Aaron was saying as well as Harry, sort of those, those lessons or the similarities or the ways in which you, you can tell that, that what Charlie Blair did in terms of influencing those guys is, is carrying through to how they coach now and, and maybe teach you all about stuff other than just soccer. Yeah, um, I've actually... I've never had the, the the fortunate benefit of having Coach Blair coach me for soccer, but I mean, we come out and we play on Charlie Blair Field every day in the fall, and um, Coach Lewis and Ucrop are, I mean, at least weekly, they're bringing Coach uh, Blair up when they're just huddling us around, or they're we we just performed badly in a drill, and they want to bring us in and sort of center us. I think that Coach Blair, from what I've uh, heard from Lewis, Coach Lewis and uh, Ucrop, Coach Blair was really good at centering everyone and calming everyone down. He was sort of like a, I, I want to say like a calming factor of the team when the stress levels were high and the pressures was on. He could sort of bring everyone in, center them. And um, I think that he taught Coach Lewis and Ucrop to do that as well because they, they are very good at doing that as well. Um, and yeah, I think that just since he's been gone for two years, but I still feel like he's sort of part of the team with the lessons that he's taught uh, Lewis and Ucrop while they were assistant coaches. They're still um, beneficial for our team two years after he's retired. Very cool. Hey, uh, Elise and Thomas, y'all there? Yep. The, uh, I think that cross country, I, I have a child who runs cross country and, I, and a wife who did it too and and uh, never really appreciated cross country that much when I was coming along until I, I met this, uh, this woman who was into it. Can you all, maybe for the, uh, the uh, 
uninitiated to explain to everybody, oh, it's an individual sport. It's not really a team sport. How do y'all, how would you explain to people that, man, this is the coolest team sport? I mean, it isn't just about what I do with my time or how I perform, but you know, this, is, this is why this is such a cool uh, collective effort. Um, go ahead, Elise. You start. I think that this year more than any has really showed that it's been hard for a lot of our runners just running on your own, like staggering the races, but it's the seeing we're all staggered. We're finishing at different times. And when you're coming up and you see your teammates cheering you on who may have already finished and then getting to cheer on others, it's really just, um, it's really represented what our team is about and that the support, like whether you have a disappointing meet and you're upset about it, then just seeing your teammates makes everything better. And the support from your teammates makes it a good day. You don't remember the bad race, but you remember your teammates at the finish line. You remember the cool down and just kind of the experience of supporting each other and being there for each other makes it not about just yourself, but something bigger than yourself. Obviously not just in terms of scoring, you need more than one person, but in terms of the team as a whole, the team's culture, and kind of just the family that you're able to build through all the runs that you spend together, just like the time throughout the season. Yeah, and I'd also say we've got a lot of, like a, a giant diversity of different ages on our team. Like I'd say more than more than other varsity teams. And I think that, you know, for the guys, we have three seniors, right? We're like, we're totally bottom heavy right in terms of grades and I think that's a really positive thing because we've gotten the chance as older leaders to kind of shed our wisdom onto a lot of you know younger people and help build up our future and I think that for our team that's super beneficial and we we you know we have a lot of depth um but I think more importantly, we built connections and we, we see each other as, you know, we see each other as like equals, I'd say, um, you know, like I would not have known any of the freshmen or the sophomores that I know now um, who I'm pretty, you know, pretty close with um, just by, I you know, doing cross country. But it's one of those things that, you know, you, you don't really understand until you do a sport um, like that is just how you can build connections with younger people. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of fraternity to that. So. Hey, I got a question. Is, is it still, um, when I came, when I went to collegiate, it was essentially a requirement for you to play two sports. Is that still a, that's still a thing? Yes. Sir. Yes. So, you know, I really value that because I, I talk about that a lot, actually, because, um, you know, for I'm going to get in these conversations about multiple sports, playing playing more than one sport. Uh, and, you know, is it is it better to do that? Or is it better to specialize in a certain sport? And I think there's places to specialize, of course. But um, I really valued, like, that requirement at Collegiate because I ended up playing, you know, football with guys that probably had no business being on the field, like, athletically. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll, I'll keep their names out of it because I don't want to, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but uh, they know who I'm talking about. No, I'm just kidding. No, but, um, but some of those in individuals ended up being like really good, you know, at least especially even more so after high school and, you know, like when you kind of come back or there's time or social media, like you end up like realizing how tight you are with these individuals, you know, years later because of those moments. Other, without them, wouldn't have, wouldn't have, wouldn't have really spent a lot of time for various reasons, you know. Um, and, and so I, I, that was such a, a cool, you know, as collegiate preparatory school sets you up for the next step, you know, getting a chance to um, diversify your portfolio of friends and, in, you know, talk about relationships, you know, um, I think that's such a valuable thing. So, I mean, I, I think it's these memories that are, that are created. I, I think that, you know, when I, when I went to, when I, when I went on to Richmond um, and played football and baseball there, um, I got a chance to win championships in both sports, right? Uh, in my freshman year in baseball, we, we were 53 and 13. We were a game away from the College World Series. Um, and we had, a, we had a squad, right? And, and then the team got a little less, 
a little less, you know, we performed a little, a little less better year in and year out after that. But in football, we had a terrible squad. And then my senior year, we had a team, right? We had a great squad. But Dave Clawson was our head coach. He's now at Wake Forest. And first game of the year, I had a great junior year, right? Led the nation in punt returns, led the, uh, the A-10 in receiving my junior year. So I'm hoping if I have a great senior year, I might get a, sh a shot. To, I wasn't going to get drafted, but maybe like maybe try out, maybe get a flyer, get a flyer on a team and try out for an NFL team. And first game of the year, I got hurt uh, against UMass. And that was it. I, largely, that was it. I came back and played a little bit, but largely, that was it for me. And um, but we won a championship and it was like the best year of my life, like well, up to that point, you know, from us from a sports perspective. It was just like it was the group of leaders, senior leaders um, and and being a part of, you know, helping the young guy, like Thomas, I think you said it, like helping, helping the young, in this case, guys come up and like, you know, kind of show them the ropes and, and the experiences and, and, you know, where I could, where I could make an impact, make an impact. So I, I it kind of feels like, you know, in this COVID year, it's almost like a, a year of being like kind of riddled with injuries where you're just like, you know, how can I find different ways to, to create these memories? And, 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 and like Aaron said, I think it's all, it's gonna, a lot of it's gonna be in relationship building, you know? And so I think that's how you can really make the most of this time, you know, is find these creative ways to like build relationships within the, the daily interactions you have. And, and um, because, you know, you can't get these years back. Like everybody says, you know, high school goes quickly. It does. Same thing with college. You don't get these, this, these years back. So it's just making the most of this fall, this, this winter, et cetera, this spring and, and, um, and do that through relationships and, and finding new relationships, challenging yourself to, to, to kind of, you know, uh, go deeper with one other, with one, which is one more individual, you know, will, will, will go a long way. So. I'd like to segue right there to the three football captains, because I think they're the one team we know who isn't this fall going to get any competition and, and get them to talk about how they've done just exactly what Harry was talking about. I think they've done an amazing job um, through what I've seen um, and love to have them just talk about the things they've done on the field um, some of the things you've done in practice to, to really bring to light or bring to life some of the things uh, Harry was just talking about. Yeah, I would say that, you know, when we, when we, you know, got on campus, you know, early August and started practicing or whatever, um, we, we, we kind of knew, at least the captains did, that we weren't really going to have a season. Um, and, you know, so we, so we knew that and we, you know, we just try to make this season, you know, as best as we could with what we had and, you know, try to just create relationships with guys like Mr. Wilson said, um, you know, guys under us and, you know, maybe, maybe our coaches as well. Try to, you know, like for me, like kind of my guys, Mr. Palio, like Mr. Palio is always there for me. Like I can go with Mr. Palio to anything. And that's, that's not always been the case. And I think this year has definitely, um, you know, brought that out, um, which is awesome. Um, I could, I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't want that anymore, but, um, you know, our guys, our guys, I feel like, um, you know, came to play every single day, knowing that we weren't going to have a season. Um, I mean, I couldn't ask him, I couldn't ask him enough for that. Um, I think that um, with what we had, you know, obviously we don't have a season. So playing games is not playing games is really tough, but, you know, just kind of bringing the en energy like us captains every day, uh, you know, setting the tone every day. is kind of what we had to do. And I think, uh, you know, us five captains were really able to, you know, do that. And um, I think we did it extremely well. And, you know, the days that we didn't do that, which were really seldom, um, you know, probably one or two days out of the entire season, which is, which is what our coaches will probably tell you. Uh, it was evident, you know, it, 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 it was clear throughout the entire team that, you know, the energy just wasn't there today and that was on us. Um, but, you know, when we did bring the energy, which was every single day after that, uh, it, it definitely showed. And, you know, flying around in practice with no games, I mean, that's, at the beginning of the season, I didn't want to do that. No one wanted to do that. But, you know, finally we all bought in. Um, and, you know, now we're starting to play flag football. It's getting really competitive. Um, everybody's been locked up. So, uh, so yeah, juices are starting to flow right now. This is championship week starting today. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the best we're going to get. And, you know, we love doing it right now. Obviously, we couldn't play any games. But, you know, we love what we're doing right now. And, uh, you know, I think the younger guys are going to, uh, really benefit from the year they've had so John who's uh who's leading in the, the who's got the best flag football team I'd like to say myself since we uh Whoa. did take down Hunter <laughs> Milligan's team but Hunter's team has beat us twice after that so I'd probably go with Hunter 
Hey, who's got the smelliest uh, stuff that hadn't washed it all year? Is that Owen, do you think? Who's, who's stuff, who doesn't clean themselves very well or wash their junk? <laughs> probably Buck O'Neill. Yeah, probably Buck O'Neill. Ah, man. It stinks. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Hey, uh, Nora and Sarah and, and Ashley, y'all, uh, Nora, we got an undefeated tennis team, don't we? We do. <laughs> and? Um, so, I'm sorry? We have left. So we have two matches left this week. We're currently 8-0. We beat our biggest competitor, um, Stab in St. Catharines. Uh, we beat St. Catharines, I think, two weeks ago, 5-2. So that was our toughest match. But so far, we've been going strong. Um, and we're hoping to finish up this week with a 10-10-0 record. Wow. Yeah. How do we all play this, this week? I think tomorrow we play St. Gertrude's, and I think our last match is Trinity. It's fun to read about you in the newspaper. <laughs> Good work. Thank you. I'm surprised y'all didn't get Sarah on the squad because I know her dad's got serious tennis game, but field <laughs> hockey, what's going on with, with field hockey? Y'all, so, and you got Docs, you got that continuity between you and Aaron both playing for Docs. That's incredible. <laughs> Um, so field hockey has been kind of bouncing back and forth between playing St. Catharines and Trinity. Um, we've played St. Catharines twice and Trinity twice. Um, and I think that has been a really, really cool experience for our group of girls because we don't have a championship game. We don't have an LAS or a States. Um, and so it's been really playing for just for our why and why we want to be out there and why we want to be together. Um, and that has created more togetherness than the space which has separated us, <laughs> I think. Um, and we, um, we play Trinity this Wednesday. It's our last game. Um, but I mean, not Trinity, St. Catharines, but. Where is that? Is that at St. Catharines or Collegiate? It's at Collegiate. It's going to be harder, harder to hide in the woods or stand on the road to watch it, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's super hard. And I've heard the live stream is looking really good, though. So y'all should all log on. That's awesome. That's awesome. And how about volleyball? Um, So far, we're three and one. We beat um, St. Gertrude's, Trinity, Fredericksburg Christian, and we lost to St. Catharines. But in the three games that we've won, we've had the opportunity to play the whole team, which is really awesome because we've still been able to win in three sets. And this year we have a lot more underclassmen than we normally have. So it's really fun to watch the underclassmen come out on the court and be some of the people that are like helping us win the game. So I think this year is a really great learning experience for a lot of the underclassmen that we have. So in the years to come, they'll be prepared. So I really enjoyed that. I know we're getting close and great to on time, but Mr. Stanley will write y'all a note and smooth it over with your teachers. Can, uh, can yeah. everybody- Mr. Fairman, I was wondering if they have any questions for you all, well, if any of the students have questions. While, while y'all think about, if people are asking, think about this too, like the funniest thing, and whether it's alumni or, or, uh, or students, it's just like some you think back and this can be edited. So if you say something you shouldn't, they can fix that, but just, I think of some funny stuff that is ridiculous times that you've had or that in a, you know, one of your teammates has done, you've done something that was, was pretty good while, while you guys are also formulating your questions. We can get those in a minute, maybe, hopefully. I'll, I'll jump, I'll jump in. And, um, I'd say that, you know, one of the funniest things from my football experience is the uh, every year before the, uh, the homecoming game, um, we we'll, we'll go to a friend's house with a with a little hot tub, and we'll do a and we'll baptize somebody. Um, <laughs> so it sounds really weird, but um, we we've done it two years in a row and won. Uh, one wait, I think we've won both games. I don't I don't even remember. We might have lost one, but uh, last year we killed Norfolk Academy after baptizing. Uh, uh, who was it, John? Who was it? Who we baptized? Brood. Brood. Yeah, we baptized uh, Brood Stever, senior, uh, going to Alabama. And uh, yeah, it's just, we get the entire team together and we hold a big ceremony and uh, you know, we baptize and we, it's, it's the guy with the number 62, I believe always gets baptized. So whoever 62 baptizes the next 62, 
Um, and I'd say that's just like one of the weirdest traditions we have. Why, but, why 62? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Chris I, Brennan, Chris Brennan sure. started it. He was, yeah, yeah, Chris Brennan started it and he was 62. That but, sounds right. Yeah, it's, it's right. perfect. It's a thing for Brennan to do. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, how do you ordain the, uh, who gets to, do you have to go online to get ordained to be the actual shaman that presides over this ceremony? No, it's six. The old 62 uh, baptizes the new 62. Oh, that's right. But he gets credentialed somehow just by being number 62, I guess. Does correct, the new correct. 62 know he's about to get baptized when he gets his jersey kind of right. two weeks into preseason? Yes, I think 62, uh, 62 is now a, you know, you know, you know what you're in for. Yeah, right. you know what's coming. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's definitely one of the funniest parts. Of- <laughs> if it's working, keep doing it. You're that's winning what, games. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Any questions from, from the crew too? I, I know that that's one thing Ann, Ann Gray was asking if y'all had any questions. What would you say the funniest part of, of y'all's experience was? Same question. Mm. Well, I got a good one. Um, my senior year, I was co-captain. We're running around the soccer field that used to be there. Um, it's not, it was, there was no Blair, Charlie Blair field. So it was actually where like, we drive around the carpool loop on main campus, running around the soccer field. Um, my friend Katie Nelson and I are, you know, thinking we're running co-captains. Um, a really great guy friend of mine who happens to be my god, uh, my daughter's godfather. His name is Andy Loudon. Hit a soccer ball, took me straight out. I mean, face first in front of my entire team, his entire team. And there is no more embarrassing than when you think you're Miss Hot Stuff running along doing the warm up before the game and you get a soccer ball to the head. So it's a great story. I probably don't tell it as well, but that really brings you down a couple of notches when you have to like get up, get the dirt out of your face and keep moving. He swears he didn't do it. He was just practicing corner kicks, but I took it straight to the head. So that's my story, kind of stupid, but brought me down a little bit. I remember one, uh, I got, got two. I know it's getting, but one was when I was coaching. And I think, Harry, this may have been somebody from your class. It was October the 31st, and we had a big game against Fort Union or something. <laughs> Eight grade football the next day. I'm like, where is so and so? And somebody said, oh, I think he's, uh, I think he went trick or treating. Like, what? So I go crazy. I go storming into the lower school to pick up a phone. I call his house. Like, you know, can I please speak to so and so? And uh, said, oh, his, uh, he just left his trick-or-treating carpool, just picked him up. So I get this, this is a 14-year-old, and, and my wife kills me for this story now, and I tell her, she can't believe it. He's just a little boy, he wants to be trick-or-treating, but I got the most hysterical call from the kid. Oh, Mr. Farrell, I'm so sorry, I was just trick-or-treating, and I was so excited, I forgot to tell you. It was like, it would have been okay if I told you I was going trick-or-treating, I just forgot to do it. So that was one. You know who I'm talking about, Harry? You I, honestly, that? I'm trying to, I, I, know, I was there. Yeah, I, I didn't. You talk about. I was there. Another one, and this may be. Uh, this is didn't even happen with me. I heard this story through Charlie Blair. Was they had a big? I can't remember. It was the prep league championship soccer match, and Mr. Pitt was still the headmaster, and uh, and Mr. Pitt shows up and and sees Charlie, whom he had known forever from working with him at camp, and said, "How are we looking today?" And uh, Blair said, oh, you know, we're going to go out there and, you know, try to play hard and, you know, it's pretty evenly matched. We're going to try to have some fun. And Mr. Pitt said, have fun some other day. The day you win. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's about right. That's awesome. Well, I don't, you know, it's funny. I don't really, I was Warren Hunter and Blake Smith and I were reminiscing on some things and Blake Smith was watching old highlight tapes and um my brother oh yes <laughs> that's right yeah uh, well you. we were Thank so you. so Blake so Blake and I were um well he was text he basically texting us images of the oh, this old VCR it was interesting mm-hmm. it's total total Blake and he was sending but like they Warren and Blake knew like remembered every single little thing that's like ever happened during their time at Collegian, I was just in awe of like their memory. So like, I'm, I just texted Warren Wordy to, f- to find out who this trick or treating person was uh, or if he knows, cause he probably will. Um, but I, I, don't, I just remember like, you know certain individuals doing goofy stuff. I, I had a question before we got off. I don't, I'm sure we're up on time but is everybody on this call 
not is not everybody seniors on this call or we got some some juniors what's the deal some of both a little bit of both but mostly seniors now um are you individuals are you guys thinking about playing at the next level are you guys gonna get those types of opportunities are you are is, is that hopeful what's the deal there we've got a handful on here who are going uh talk about it here artson um I'm going to William and Mary to play field hockey. Um, <laughs> awesome. Hunter? I'm going to play football at the Naval Academy. Oh, great. Congrats. Right. Come on, John. Uh, I'm going to play football at Dartmouth. Yeah, that's my dad played that football at Dartmouth. You got any long underwear, John? <laughs> I'll need it, especially, especially during this time. So that, So the head coach is? Coach Stevens. Yeah, so uh, Buddy Stevens uh, played quarterback for my uh, during when, during when my dad was there. So you have to ask him about it. Harry Harry Wilson's my dad's name as well, and uh, they're pretty tight. So or they were pretty tight. So you have to make the connection with him, please. Sure. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Anybody else that I sk skipped? And we still, Coach, we still is Coach Dan. What's the funniest thing that you happened while you were there? Uh, I, I, the story I'll tell is uh, one that I think about all the time that you won't remember. It might have been from when Harry was in, was in middle school, but somewhere early in my middle school coaching career, I thought I was pretty fancy. And uh, where do you remember the name of the guy who was coaching offensive line, who was a, a preacher uh, with us back then? Was, I can't remember his name right now. But he was wild and crazy, and he told me that if I was going to be – I was new at football coaching, he had me stand on the five-man sled as the kids were hitting it. And very quickly, being a stellar athlete, I lost my balance. They knocked me off, and the sled rolled halfway up my leg. And I, <laughs> and I thought I was going to die. I was pinned underneath the thing, and you and Featherston and other people ran over and had to lift that thing off me, and it was a – I doubt great... I ran over to lift that off of you. Well, you, you waddled yeah, over. Walked over. Yeah, walked over. But it was a great dose of humble pie early in my coaching career when I had a five-man sled, probably the same one we still have today, halfway up my shin bone. It was, it was nice. I didn't, I didn't bark too much at the kids after that for a while, that's for sure. All right, kids, thank you so much for coming on here. I know you guys are supposed to be in class here in a second. Really appreciate you jumping on and certainly thank you to the alums for, for your time. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, again, I want to, uh, on behalf of Coach Doxy, Coach O'Brien, the coaches and the school, thank the kids on here for making this season a huge success. It has been an absolute success um, across the board. And uh, we really appreciate everything you've done to make that possible. Thank and you guys so much. We really appreciate everyone giving us your time and getting on here. And I know our community is going to love seeing you all on Saturday.